Hello everyone, welcome to the Adobe Creative Cloud channel. My name is Terry White. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live. And it looks like I've got a couple of people, or at least Natalie's already in the room. Hello Natalie and welcome to the Adobe Creative Cloud channel. Um, for those of you who are watching this on the replay or just jumping in, my name is Terry White again. Not again, but Terry White. <laughs> Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live today here on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel here on YouTube, uh, where I stream regularly as well as the other Adobe Evangelists. Uh, we also stream on the various Facebook pages for products like Lightroom and Illustrator and InDesign and um, XD and Adobe Stock. And just about every product has its own Facebook page and we stream there as well. So glad to see so many of you jumping in already. And I see all the folks and saying hello and hey and good afternoon, Sarah and Victoria and Christina and Stefan. Welcome everyone. If I missed your name, sorry about that. Won't have time to shout out to everybody, but um, Catherine and Merlin, Merlin and <laughs> Carlo and Lisa, hello there. All right, so with that said, we're gonna cover uh, one of my favorite topics today, and that's uh, you know, a few apps that will help you up your photography game, meaning just get do, do more things while you're out and about um, with your uh, mobile devices and your digital cameras. Now, I know probably most of you have a mobile device of, of some kind, whether it be a smartphone, a tablet, or a smartphone and a tablet. And probably if you're a photographer, many of you have a regular camera as well, whether it be a DSLR, or a uh, point and shoot or some other type of camera uh, that you're shooting those great quality photos with. And uh, this is not to take away from that. This is actually to help you augment that process. And uh, the first question I'll usually get when we're showing this stuff is, well, why would I ever do anything on my phone? You know, my computer is way better, way faster, way more accurate, way more everything, way more powerful, and you're absolutely right. But I could ask you the same thing when smartphones first came out. Why would you ever do email on a smartphone? The screen's so small, you have to you know, tap little keys. But we can't imagine not doing that anymore. We can't imagine not checking for messages, texting, and doing all those things on that little bitty keyboard that we used to think was impossible to work with. So I'm going to ask you, if you are uh, new to this, to have an open mind and <laughs> just hear me out. And of course, you can decide for yourself. If you don't like um, working with mobile devices, then by all means, stick to the desktop apps. But I think there will be a little bit of something for everyone today. All right, provided you have a mobile device. Uh, so with that said, the apps that I'm going to be talking about are free. They are free downloads. Um, they are also available on iOS and Android. Now, Nathan says, get to the point. Well, Nathan, this is the point. This is a broadcast where I have to explain things that will make the point, so I don't have to answer them later. If you're impatient, I invite you to watch the replay and scrub past the part where I'm talking now to get to the part you want to see. All right, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump over to my iPhone. I've got my iPhone uh, connected here. I will switch it out in just a second. Uh, after I cover the first app and we'll get into the iPad Pro as well. Uh, so what I've got um, is my Adobe folder. And in my Adobe folder, I've got all my Adobe apps. And of course, these are free to download. These are all free apps. There's no cost to download or use any of them. However, if you are a Creative Cloud member, then... Um, you will be able to take advantage of some things that let you, for example, sync your work back to the desktop or work on the project and complete it further on the desktop um, or grab assets that you've been working with with other apps and on the desktop via Creative Sync. So again, apps are free to download. You can use them. You don't have to pay. However, if you are a paying Creative Cloud member, then you get to do more. All right, so with that said, let's start with the first one. So I, I talked about there are going to be three apps. So the first one's going to be Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Now, when you open up Lightroom Mobile, um, if you don't have any collections, you won't see anything. But the, I have a bunch of collections synced. Now, these are all images that were taken with the DSLRs. They were taken with um, point and shoots. They were taken with my smartphone. They were taken in the Lightroom app. So there's a variety of images here. 
all of these are synced because I am a Creative Cloud member back to Lightroom on the desktop. However, if I weren't a Creative Cloud member, then I could still have the, have the photos in here. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to actually use the new Lightroom camera. So at the very bottom on the right hand uh, side, there's a little camera icon at the very bottom. Uh, if I press the camera icon to bring the camera up, of course I'm pointing at my computer screen, so we're just gonna point at water for right now. And I'm gonna tap back to automatic, there we go. And you'll see that um, I have the ability, of course, to take pictures. Now you're saying, well, who cares? You can take pictures with the built-in app that's on the phone. Why would you care that this has an app? or this has a camera. Uh, it's because you notice at the very top, it says the initials or the acronym DNG. That stands for digital negative. Uh, if you tap, you can switch between digital negative, which is raw or JPEG. So that means that I now have the ability to capture the full data that my sensor can capture on my, on my smartphone without any compression no um, processing, no extra things being added to the file, and I get the same benefit of working in RAW on my phone as I would have gotten with working with RAW on my DSLR. So that takes it up a notch because I can now capture a wider range, dynamic range, I can capture uh, more data, I can have better resolution, better, well not better resolution, but better looking photos by capturing in RAW for all the same reasons we capture in RAW uh, with the DSLR. All right, so. Uh, if I were to take that shot, of course it would take it and uh, add it to the, not the camera, well, it'll add it to the Lightroom's camera roll. So it will actually be in the Lightroom uh, set. So there it is at the top there. It's in the, in the, among the 14,613 photos that I've got synced. All right, so let's go on. Let's talk about the editing capability now. So I'm going to jump over to, actually my last photo shoot was actually a shoot with my my dog, my puppy, Lisa. Uh, so this was the setup that I took. Now this was just a regular shot of what the setup looked like. These shots were taken with the DSLR. Uh, but now since I synced that collection with Lightroom on the desktop, all of those photos are now here on my phone as well. And they're on my iPad and they're on my web on, or in the web browser. I can get to these photos anywhere that I want. Um, now, of course, uh, one of the other things that we're so used to, we're so used to holding the phone this way, but you kind of miss out on some of the interface design with Lightroom Mobile on, on iOS at this point, because when you rotate it to the side, everything's, all the controls are now on the side, and it kind of almost works more like it does on the desktop, where you have the panels on the right side in Lightroom. Now you've got these uh, pop-out panels here on the left or the right side of Lightroom Mobile. And of course, you can still swipe between the photos. Now this is a retouched version of this photo. So this was done in Photoshop on the desktop. And that's the original photo. And of course, um, I've got more that are unretouched. Now at this point, I can go in and anything I do in Lightroom, these are all non-destructive. And yes, these are all free. So uh, I saw that question just pop up in the chat. These are all free. Yeah, the dog's name is Lisa. That was what she was named at the uh, rescue where, where we got her. So I didn't change her name. I could have, but I didn't. Um, so no, I did not name her Lisa. I probably would have named her something like Pixel, but that's another story. All right, so let's go in. Let's, see, let's do some things. So for example, one of the things I can do is um, adjust the lighting. So we have exposure. We have contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks the same exact uh, controls and dials that you would have in Lightroom on the desktop. So for example, if I want to adjust the exposure, I'll exaggerate it. I can go up and down on the exposure just by dragging the slider. Now, the beauty of doing this in Lightroom, as opposed to any other app that I'm going to show you today, is that these are non-destructive edits. So if I make the exposure too much and then later decide, hey, I want to change it back, I can go back and change it back. It's no big deal. I could change it back here on, on the phone. I could change it on the iPad because it syncs. I could change it on the desktop because it syncs. So the, the um, only changes that are syncing back and forth are the changes that are happening in the metadata. Uh, so for example, I can increase the contrast or decrease the contrast. 
I can adjust for the shadows, and of course, I can even recrop this photo. It was already cropped with me standing off to the side there. So we can recrop it and kind of get rid of some of the equipment. And there we go, we get a much better crop. And of course, that becomes uh, the finished shot. Now, I notice a little wrinkle back there on the uh, seamless paper. So it's like the paper's creased a little bit. Now, if this were on the desktop and I wanted to fix that crease, then what I'd have to do is I'd have to go in, and here I can make this bigger, by the way, since we're landscape. There we go, let's make that a little bigger. Um, I'd have to go in and open that in Photoshop. Now, I could possibly use the spot removal tool, but Photoshop's healing brush and patch tool, they all do a much better job. So one of the things I can do is you notice that um, when I go to the share menu, there's an edit in command. And that edit in command is very similar to the edit in command in Photoshop or in Lightroom in Photoshop. So for example, when I go for Lightroom and I say edit in Photoshop, it can take a copy of this photo over to Photoshop, letting me do everything Photoshop can do, and then save a copy back to Lightroom. So I still have the original, and I would have this new copy that's edited. Same process even on mobile. So if I say edit in, uh, lets me choose the resolution. I want to say the maximum resolution available. And I get a couple choices. I get to either liquefy this in Photoshop Fix or heal this in Photoshop Fix. So this is the Lightroom mobile to mobile workflow uh, for people that are working across our mobile apps. Now, if you wanna do more than just liquefy, like if you wanna take advantage of all the features in Photoshop Fix, which is the next app we're gonna to go to, by the way, um, then you don't have to just live with liquefy. You can, um, or healing. You can open the photo up in Photoshop Fix directly from Lightroom, but go to Fix first to do it. And then you can do everything that Photoshop Fix can do. But right now, these are like quick round trips to either liquefy or either heal because those are the most common things people will need to do that Lightroom Mobile, um, that Lightroom Mobile can't do. So let's see, Peter's saying, I had no idea Lightroom Mobile had this power. Yes, it does. All right, so let's go to healing in Photoshop. And of course, that does work in a vertical format. So let me put it back to vertical. And yes, you can still see, but let me go ahead and move that up a little bit more so you can see more. Okay, so now I've got that spot identified and I'm already in spot healing in Liquify. So it took me right to it. I don't have to do, or um, in Photoshop Fix, I don't have to do anything else. So now I can grab my brush. I can adjust the brush size. I'm just using my finger here on the phone. You can use a stylus if you have one, of course. And now I can kind of just go ahead and brush that area to do my spot healing and kind of fix that little wrinkle in the paper. Same thing, I see a little dust or little uh, hairs down there on the uh, seamless paper, and I can just go ahead and spot remove all of those out. Now I've got the mode turned on where it shows me where I've already done it. That's why the little red spots keep popping up every time I do it, because it shows me where I've done it before. Uh, but it's nice that it does that, so I can see, hey, had, had I already covered that area or not? So these are the kinds of touch-ups and kinds of things that people will want to do perhaps before sharing a photo on social media. And I know what you're thinking, well, the finger is kind of difficult to work with because it's not precise. And you're right, it's not as precise as maybe a stylus, which that's why I do a lot of this on the iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. But you do have an extreme level of zooming. So if your finger is too big, just zoom in on the photo to make the uh, make the more or finer adjustments that um, your finger might be too big when you're zoomed out to do. So I can really get in here and really clean this up quite a bit. Now, uh, spot healing is great, but sometimes I use the patch tool, just like in Photoshop, for bigger areas. So for example, let's say I wanna patch this area right here that I'm, I'm painting. If the spot healing doesn't do it, usually patch will, meaning if I don't like the results. So then I can go ahead and just switch to patch and it remembers the last thing that I just painted with my finger, and now that becomes the patch selection. So you actually make the patch selection via your um, via the healing brush first, or spot heal. So now I can pick that up, drag it around, and use that as my patch. So once again, I'm on the healing brush. If I wanted to patch that area, 
go to the patch tool, pick the patch up and move it around. And then that becomes my new patch. Now, once I'm done cleaning this up, getting rid of all the little um, artifacts and defects or blemishes or anything in the photo, then at that point, I'm now finished and I'm ready to return back to Lightroom. You notice at the very top, that blue banner says, save and return to Lightroom. And once I do that, it takes me right back to Lightroom to the same collection I was in, and it puts the edited photo right next to, which I'd have to find it, I can't remember which one it was out of these, but um, it will put it right back next to the original. I saw it pop in, I think it's this one. No, that's actually the edited one I did in the desktop. Oh no, which one was it? I think it might be, it's the one I cropped, but I also edited, let's see if it's this one. Nope, that's not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one, which one is it? Sorry folks, I saw it come in, I just didn't see which one it was. There it is, that's that one. Okay, so now the photo's been um, touched up, edited completely with um, Lightroom to start, to make uh, non-destructive adjustments, and now I have a copy of it, and that copy comes back in as a JPEG, no matter whether it was shot with RAW or not, um, directly from Photoshop Fix. So that's the way Photoshop Fix works. Now I'm gonna switch gears here for a second, because while we were uh, taking a look at Photoshop, um, well, we took a look at Lightroom on the phone, we took a look at Photoshop Fix on the phone. Now I wanna continue, but I wanna continue on the iPad. So I'm gonna unplug the phone for a second and get the iPad Pro. Plug that in, because I can only have one plugged in at a time with this setup. And let me go ahead and reshare the screen. All right, bear with me for a second here. All right, let's choose the iPad. And there we are. Okay, I can switch back so you can see it now. And there we are. Okay, we're back. All right, so now I've got the iPad Pro, uh, which of course, again, you could do all of this on the phone, but the advantage, of course, of doing it on the uh, iPad is it's a bigger screen. That's really the advantage. The same tools are there, same features are there, but just a bigger workspace. Also, if it is a Pro model, then that means you get to use your Apple Pencil for more precise edits. Uh, so let's go back to uh, my Adobe folder. And same apps, so same iOS apps, whether I'm on the phone or the desktop, I'm sorry, or the uh, iPad. And now I can launch Photoshop Fix directly and of course work on any projects that I've already started, as well as work on projects that I want to create from scratch. Uh, so if I tap the plus sign on the left-hand side, then that will ask me where do I want to get my photos from and I can get them from that same Lightroom collection. So if I go down here and I go to uh, the Lisa show, which is where I got those from earlier, then I can go down and find uh, another photo to work on. So for example, I could take this one, open this one up. Now the edits I'm gonna do now are not non-destructive, or I should say they're destructive because Lightroom, just like, it's just like Lightroom and Photoshop on the desktop. Photoshop has a few non-destructive features by far. It has, you know, smart objects, layers, all that. But for the most part, you are editing pixels. And Photoshop Fix is the same. You are editing pixels. Uh, whereas Lightroom, you're doing all your edits in metadata. Therefore, they're non-destructive. Lightroom Mobile, same way. So in this case, um, I have the full screen to work with. I have all the tools and properties. And because I started in Fix, I'm not just limited to either doing Liquify or either doing Healing. I can do anything I want. So for example, I can do a crop. Now if I do the crop, this is a permanent crop for this image. Now again, I'm working on a copy. I'm not changing the original, so that's okay. Uh, so I can go ahead and crop this and crop it some more that way and get it just the way I want. And once I'm okay, I've got my crop. Now I notice that there's still a little piece of the light stand right by the tail there. Let's move that over. And I wanna get rid of that light stand. So again, that's something that Lightroom Mobile or Lightroom Desktop really doesn't do a good job at. Uh, so I can go ahead and grab the healing brush again. 
I can choose my brush size up or down just by uh, scrolling. And again, this is a free app called Adobe Photoshop Fix. Uh, you can download this for iOS or Android. All right, so there it is. Let's do a little bit more. And it still wants to hang on to that last little edge. So what I can do is switch to the patch tool and perhaps patch that. And that did a better job. I got one little piece left over. And same thing, patch tool, and patch that out. Okay, so that got rid of that, and we kind of saw the workflow before with the healing brush and just kind of healing out a lot of these little uh, hairs, and she sheds, <laughs> she sheds her fur. Um, but get rid of, just clean all the stuff up on the floor. And if you're trying to see what's he doing, this is what it looks like on the iPad itself. So just using the Apple Pencil and kind of cleaning this up. Now again, the nice thing about doing this on an iPad Pro is that the stylus is pressure sensitive. So you get a lot finer control than you would with your finger. Uh, so if you have an Android device that's pressure sensitive or a um, iPad Pro, then you're going to even be able to do uh, better edits on the go. All right, so I'm not going to clean up the whole thing, but you get the idea. It's just a matter of going around the entire image and cleaning up all the little pieces until you've got it all done. Now, you can also do it before and after at the top. So that's before. That's before I did anything, and now that's after. So it doesn't feel like you're doing a lot until you actually look at the before and see how much is gone now. And, of course, you can still continue working. All right, now uh, one of the other things I like to do while I'm retouching, whether it's a person or animal is uh, okay so I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm done with that and now what I want to do is I want to go in and um, I don't want to smooth the image but I do want to sharpen this app is called Adobe Photoshop fix all right so I'm gonna go ahead and go to sharpen I've got my sharpen tool and I'm just gonna go ahead and sharpen the eyes sharpen the nose sharpen all the pieces or elements of the photo that I want to be nice and sharp. And usually I want eyes to be nice and sharp. All right, so we've done that. And uh, we, and by the way, there's a new face version that doesn't detect a human face uh, for skin smoothing. So that's new to Photoshop Fix. So if we were doing a portrait and you wanted to smooth the skin, that's now a built-in feature. So I see the same thing. I see a little wrinkle right up here above her head of the in the... Um, seamless paper so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my healing tool and again I'm just going to go ahead and try and heal that out if that doesn't work then we'll patch it out all right that worked pretty nicely all right so I can go ahead and do that do that do that and also it helps when you're not trying to retouch things that are actually little pieces of dust on your display clean your screen first all right so we've got this and it's looking pretty good I'm happy with it. I can go in and make further adjustments, but for the most part, you know what? Let me show you a liquify adjustment um, just to show you liquify, even though she doesn't really need it. But you notice her collarbone is kind of poking out right here on the left-hand side. That's natural, but let's say you wanted to cure that. Uh, I could go into liquify. And again, I'm going to, um, I already got a, a decent sized brush there. I'm just going to go ahead and push that over. Just clean that up. Just smooth that out just a little bit there. So it's not poking out as much. Same thing with her back. Let's get a nice big brush, not quite that big maybe. And let's, we can go here and just push the back down a little bit. So it's not poking up as much. So that's kind of cool things you can do with Liquify. And of course there is face aware Liquify for human faces. All right, so that is Photoshop Fix app number two. So first app was Lightroom Mobile. Second app was Adobe Photoshop Fix. And both are available for iOS and Android as free apps from your respective app stores. Now, what, what can I do with this now that I'm done? Well, Lightroom automatically syncs those photos back to Lightroom on the desktop if you're a Lightroom CC member. If you're a Photoshop CC member, again, optional, don't have to be, but if you are, then you get an extra option. You get the ability to send this image 
with any layers that it generated back to Photoshop on the desktop to continue it. So that's what I meant by uh, hear me out <laughs> because I realized that Photoshop is the you know, king on the desktop. Absolutely, hands down, I couldn't imagine life without it. But sometimes I might be doing something on mobile just to get me going, or that's where I took the photo and I want to share it. But then I may want to do more with it that the mobile apps can't do. So I'll go ahead and tap the share button, and you'll notice that there is a send send to Photoshop CC. There's even a save back to Lightroom, even though I didn't even though I didn't do the jump to Photoshop fix from Lightroom. I can still send this edited version back to Lightroom. But I'm going to send it to the desktop instead. What that will do is upload the file as a PSD with any layers. It's rendering a PSD file out, Photoshop document. And once it syncs it, um, it syncs it back down to my computer. My computer should open with that image and here it comes in Photoshop on the desktop. So um, there it is with um, any layers that it would have generated, it didn't generate any that I really need to keep in this case, but there is my edited file for me to now continue doing anything else I want to do from the desktop. So that's the, again, that workflow for people that are, hey, I want to you know, be out and about and doing stuff. I got my phone with me at all times, but for certain things, I might want to go ahead and take advantage of the full power of my desktop computer and therefore great that I can send this um, back to um, Photoshop on the desktop. Okay, last app. Let's go ahead and switch back to the iPad. I forgot to do that on one of my streams and I was showing the browser <laughs> forever even though I was working on the iPad. All right, I'm going to jump out of um, I'm going to jump out of Photoshop Fix. So keep in mind, even though I'm finished with that edit and even though I send it to the desktop, it's still a project in Photoshop Fix. And projects sync between your mobile devices. So if I've got Photoshop Fix on my phone and Photoshop Fix on my iPad, which if I bring up my phone real quick, I'm not going to plug it back in. I'm just going to jump out of Lightroom where I left it, jump over to Photoshop Fix, and it just synced that project. So that project is now on my phone as well. So I can always pick up where I left off on any mobile device with the projects that sync. And of course, I can send it to the desktop phone and finish it there. All right, let's jump out of Photoshop Fix. Let's go to the third and final app, which is going to be Photoshop Mix. So Mix and Fix, Fix and Mix. Um, they're done by the same team. That might be why the names rhyme. Uh, but what's Fix versus Mix? What's the difference? Fix, think of it as, a, as your retouching tool for doing the kinds of edits we're doing. It's got Spot Healing Brush clone stamp, um, patch tool, liquify, um, it's got the ability to paint. Those are the kinds of things, to change the color meaning of pixels, those are the kinds of things you do in Photoshop Fix. What do you do in Photoshop Mix then? Mix is more of an app to combine layers together or do layering, compositing. So for people that uh, want to see what two images would look like if they were put together, and you don't want to have to wait till you get all the way back to your computer to do that. That's when you'd open up Photoshop um, Mix. Now, Photoshop Mix, nowhere near as powerful, of course, as Photoshop on the desktop. You do have layers, but you're limited to, I think it's five layers on Photoshop Mix, which is up, it used to only be two. So that's an improvement. All right, let's launch Photoshop Mix. And I've got Photoshop Mix up, and I got this project that I worked on in San Francisco. We're gonna duplicate we're going to work on a, clean, or a new version of this project. I'm going to show you how I put it together. Um, this is really, if we, or actually, if we open this one, I think this is the layered version. Or no, that's not the layered version. This is the layered version. There we go. Nope. <laughs> I had it wrong. Or I opened the other one by mistake. Let's go back. It's got to be this one then. Okay, so it's downloading that project because I did do it on the phone, I, I remember now, and now it's opening it. And this one, still opening. There we are. There we are. Okay, so this one's got four layers in it. So it's got the layer for the uh, city skyline. That's a photo I took with my iPhone uh, from the balcony of the hotel. 
And then it's got a couple of layers, that diamond shape, and then it's got the guy. So these were all put together uh, on my phone, actually, with Photoshop Mix. So let's, let's do a new version of this. I'm going to use a different, slightly different version, slightly different photo. So same thing. On, and by the way, Photoshop Mix is a free download. So just like Photoshop, uh, fix on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the plus sign. I'm going to go to... Um, I'm going to go to Lightroom, and in Lightroom, I'm going to go to, I think I want to go to Compositing, and there's my cities to work with. So instead of using that, that evening shot, I'm going to use more of a daylight shot to do this. So let's go ahead and grab uh, this one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open this photo up, and that becomes layer number one. So now you'll notice... Above layer number one on the right-hand side, there's a plus sign to add layer number two. And if you add layer number two, there'll be a plus sign again, add layer number three. And you can, of course, mix and, and move the layers around. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on the plus sign to add layer number two. And layer number two, I think I'm going to grab from a CC library. Um, you can grab your images from any place you want, whether on your device, in Creative Cloud, in a library, in Lightroom, wherever it is. So in this case, I have a library called Photoshop Mix. It's got, see, remember that diamond shape? That's where that came from. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Um, this is an Adobe stock image. So we got this guy leaping on a white background. White backgrounds are cool, much easier to cut out. And it's asking me, do I wanna resize the canvas because this image is bigger? I'm gonna say no, don't resize it, just leave it the way it is. So now we've got this image, of course, with its existing background, the common problem we always run into, sitting on top of the city. And I want to, of course, not have the white background so that I can have it not sitting on top, or not have a background on top of the city. The city already has a background. So what I want to do in this case is I want to, um, I'm sad that, uh, can't get the Photoshop fix. Why can't you get Photoshop fix, Amy? All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Now there's a cutout feature built right in. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap the cutout button at the bottom. And now it's using like a quick select kind of feature that we would have on the desktop. So it's asking me, hey, I don't know what you want to cut out. Tell me. So just by going in and adding in the pieces, it does a quick select. Now, of course, quick select and Photoshop mix is not always going to get 100% accurate. Um, but if you zoom in, if you take your time, if, especially if you use a stylus, you will get much better results. So I'm getting way better results on this version of it than I was getting when I was trying to use my fingers on the phone. I can already tell how much more precise this is being because Photoshop, um, Photoshop Mix does respect the uh, Apple Pencil. So it respects the pressure sensitivity. Let's get a little bit more hair there. All right, now, the, here's, I'm gonna cheat a little because it's honestly gonna be too hard to do. And that's okay, I'm admitting it right off the top because what I could try and do is zoom in and try and get this cord, and trying to get that cord without any white pixels just isn't worth it. I've tried. Um, I think on my other version on the phone, I did get most of it and it was okay, but it took a long time for something that once it's so small, you won't be able to see it anyway. That is just better. We're going to make his headphones wireless. That's it. That's the technique. Wireless headphones. Also, zooming in will help you get any areas you missed. If you add in too much, you could always subtract. And there's also a brush or a brush feature. So now this is brand new where quick select was trying to get everything. And I only want to get just his neck. I don't want to get the rest. So same thing. I can go in and brush in specific areas that I missed while I was zoomed out because I didn't see them and just brushing in my selection. There we go. Oh yeah, I was doing a bad cutout job, zoomed out. I couldn't see any of this. That's okay. And by the way, also if you, let's say I did miss something and I went ahead and said, okay, I'm done. You can always come back and get the areas you missed. 
So it's not a, it's not finished until you like, like leave the project. It's always available for you because it remembers all of the remaining pixels. So even though it says cut out, it's not really deleting those pixels. It's really just masking them. And if you've used Photoshop masked, you know the advantage of a mask over, over actually deleting the pixels. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and erase. Erase some of the white off of that. There we go. Erase some of the white off of that. All right, I think I got as much of it as I need. Cause like I said, it's gonna be pretty small. So now again, I can tap the okay button in the bottom right. And that will be my cutout. Now again, if I said, oh no, I can, I can see too much white by his foot. All I have to do is go back to cutout and then zoom in on that foot. I don't lose anything. I can pick right back up where I left off. I almost wish you could see this on the layer before you click OK. It would just save you the trip back and forth. So I can see where I messed up there. I can go ahead and fix that. And I thought there was something else I saw. Let's go back in and add, add this. Yeah, there we go. That looked a little funky. Add in some of that hair. All right, I think I got the rest. And back in a little bit more of the foot. Okay, let's try it again. All right, not bad. Again, I could keep going back and forth, but you get the idea. Because we're not gonna keep them that big anyway, so that's why it really won't matter as much. We're gonna go ahead and now I'm just pinching and zooming, moving him down and putting him where I want him in the scene. All right, so again, if I want another layer, tap the plus sign, add another layer, choose to cut it out. But I don't want another layer. What I want instead, notice how the buildings are kind of leaning in on each other. Look at that, look at this tower on the left-hand side, this brown tower over here. Uh, you can't see my finger, but that brown tower on the left side looks like it's leaning in that way. The towers on the right side are, look like they're leaning in that way. So I'm gonna select this image layer, this background, and at the very bottom, there's a feature, there's three features, upright, shake reduction, and content aware fill. They all have stars on them because all three of those are cloud-based features. In other words, when this app was first implemented, we didn't have an iPad Pro. So therefore, it would upload everything to the cloud that you told it to do of, of those three features and process it with the full version on the cloud and send it back down to your uh, device. So it did that, it sent me down three versions, which I can choose between and see which one I like better. And it's gonna either be number one or number three, which are pretty much the same. So that was the original, leaning over, and that's number one after applying upright to it. So if I like number one, tap okay, and then we'll just pinch and zoom that up a little bit because it cropped it, or, or skewed it, I should say. And there we are. Okay, so now I've got this image, and one thing I don't like about it is his feet are too light. In other words, because this was shot, he was shot on a white background, his feet were nicely lit. All his, his whole body was lit all the way down to the bottom. Well, in reality, if this were the, if he was really on this scene, he wouldn't be lit at least not like this. Now, I could go in and apply looks and adjustments, but they would apply to everything. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save this one to the camera roll. Actually, I could save it to a library. What do I wanna do? I'll save it to the camera roll, it'll be faster. So that's saving a flattened version of it. So that way, now I can open up that flattened version in another app, or I could um, work on, I could work on the layered version on the desktop. So many choices. Let's send this to the desktop as well. Let's go ahead and uh, send this to the, uh, send it to Photoshop CC. And that will save it, render it, make a Photoshop document with layers and send it back to the desktop. Just 
just waiting for that to happen. Okay, it sent it and click OK or tap OK. <clears throat> and in a second or two, it will sync that down to my desktop and open in Photoshop like it did with the other one. Um, while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this project. Oh, too late. Sorry, you're done. And here it comes. Now, keep in mind, I'm now in Photoshop on the desktop with the full version of this photo. So I've got my layers. I've got my mask. I've got the ability to go in and finish working on this any way that I want. Because now it's sent the whole thing back to the desktop with all the work that I've done so far, including the cutout with a layer mask. So if it didn't cut it out just right, I want to fine tune it on the desktop. I can, but I was able to get the project started, maybe even show it to a client on the go of how it was going to look. However, let's go back to mobile for a second and switch back to the iPad or actually let's just hide Photoshop for a second. All right, let's get back to the iPad and here's what I want to do. I've, I'm going to get out of Photoshop, um, get out of Photoshop mix and I'm going to go to Photoshop back to Photoshop fix and in Photoshop fix I'm going to go ahead and open up this um, this version of the photo and now that I have this version of the photo and again this is the flattened version so I already have a copy still in Photoshop mix of all the layers I have a copy on the desktop with all the layers this is the flattened version that I want to do one specific thing to it I want to go in for the lighting area and I want to choose darken and I want to choose a small brush maybe something like that and I just want to go in and start darkening the bottom of my subject just darken his feet a little bit darken his pants a little bit just so he's not so evenly lit I can see where I need to do some work on that cutout but you get the idea all right and that could be my finished version, or I could go back and finish it on the desktop. But that way I can show people, hey, this is kind of what I'm thinking. What do you think? And I did this all on mobile. So again, quick recap. The three mobile apps, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Mobile, Adobe Photoshop Fix for retouching, and Adobe Photoshop Mix for layering and compositing and blending modes and adjustments like that. All are free. All are available on iOS and Android. And you don't have to use, uh, you don't, well, you have to use Photoshop CC if you want to send it to the desktop, but you don't have to be a CC member unless you want to send it to the desktop. Uh, they don't work with the previous versions of Photoshop. All right. You're confused. Why not just use Photoshop CC? Because maybe I only have my phone with me, as I covered earlier in, this, in the broadcast. Or maybe I only have my iPad with me. Maybe I don't have Photoshop CC with me and I just want to get stuff done. That's the workflow. Those are the apps that I was talking about earlier. And I'm hoping you got something out of it. I see lots of comments about, I love it. Where do I get it? Nice. So forth and so on. Creativity is power. It absolutely is. And hey, hello, Brazil. How's everybody? And yes, I did use it on the Mac. So... Um, these were the versions that we sent from mobile back to the desktop so that we could continue working on them, including, like I said, the mask, uh, the mask cutout, which needs some work <laughs> that I could go finish on the desktop. So, or actually, you're not seeing my screen. Let's do that again. Okay, so here we are back in Photoshop. That was the first one we did in Photoshop Fix. Here's the one we did in Photoshop Mix, complete with the layers and the mask, which needs a little work. But starting on mobile, finishing on mobile, or finishing on the desktop, your choice. And again, the mobile apps are free. So if you are a desktop bound or laptop bound person and that's all you ever want to do, great. Continue doing it on the desktop or laptop. But if you take pictures with your mobile devices, which many of us do, uh, the best camera is the one you have with you. So many times you're probably reaching for your phone because you have it and you're taking those pictures before you post them, before you show them, you now have pretty much a full photo editing studio in your pocket with Photoshop Fix, Photoshop Mix, and Lightroom 
to make adjustments to those photos before you share them from your phone or from your tablet. So with that said, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. Go download Photoshop Fix, Mix, and Lightroom on iOS and Android and give it a try. Let me know what you think. Cheers, everybody, and uh, stay tuned to the Creative Channel. If you're not subscribed to it, Creative Cloud Channel, I, I highly recommend you subscribe to it. We're doing live broadcast here on a regular basis, pretty much daily. Uh, so there's always something cool here to watch. Uh, so with that said, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm going to say goodbye.